You know, I'm sorry, I know that sounds probably disrespectful to the sensitive, but I mean, you know, if you just see what goes on, I mean, if you just look in your own heart and you just realize, oh my God, you know, I am, I'm a total asshole. I, I just am. Yeah. Yeah, you really are. And that's not going to change. In spite of what Jesus said. I mean, he was the big optimist. He really thought, People could overcome their judgment and actually forgive themselves and everyone else. He really believed that. It was so, so, so sweet somehow. But, let's face it, it just, it just didn't work. Even though his name is being revered uh, everywhere, people, you know, they, cause, well, they do it because they don't know what they're doing. I mean, they're just looking, they're grasping at straws, they're so desperate for something wonderful to happen. But that's the secret. They keep looking for this external savior, this something that's going to come in and just overcome all of our nature. And you just don't realize that that's not what Jesus was saying. He says, you already have it. You already have it in you. You already have the goodness in you. Just do those simple things. Because ultimately, peace on earth is going to be the, the way that human beings can recognize, oh my God, we, we did it. We created heaven on earth. We actually did it. We followed Jesus' prescription, and it worked. But you're not. You're not taking that responsibility to be the good person, to be the miracle, to be the reason why peace is on earth. You can't help yourself. I understand that. I, I, believe me, like I said, there, <laughs> there's no delusions in my mind. But that's the big picture that Jesus saw. He saw that if we could stop judging, and we could use that opportunity where we stop judging and actually just experience the moment to build up the awareness to actually forgive ourselves and everything else. So just to forgive the nature of our human, you know, the human nature that's within. And he just said, once you do that, if you can do those two big steps, then the big step comes. And that's where you love yourself. When you really recognize, oh, man, I don't have to judge. I can live in the moment. I can live connected to the divine. I can be for, I can forgive and be forgiven for being human being. And I will do everything I can to be a loving spirit, to love myself, to love everyone, to love all of creation, to love God, to even love me. The devil, the whole image of your evil, you're supposed to love even me. Mr. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Because people can't do what Jesus says. But I got to admit, it just sort of made sense to me. I don't think it will happen, but... If people really could do that, they actually can live in the moment. Stop judging the moment. Stop judging themselves or everything else or God or anything. Just stop judging it. Stop putting on some kind of criticism about what's going on around us. Instead, seek out forgiveness. Just recognize, hey, that's that total acceptance that creation is what it is, that God is what it is, that the devil is what it is, that we are what we are, that human beings are what we are. And then they can move into that love. And if they genuinely can find love with themselves and others, imagine what would happen if everyone else did the same thing. Can you imagine everyone loving, actually understanding, loving creation, loving God's beauty, loving what is happening between people, loving that we actually can love each other, then there will be peace on earth. I mean, that's the formula. He, he nailed it. I mean, that's it. But 
Try that out. Is it possible? Ah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Well, that's too hard. In fact, you can even hear Christians say, "It's too hard to be a Christian." It's too hard to do it the way Jesus wants us to. So they just become dogmatic. They just know that, well, okay, we can't be this total spiritual being that has found love and created peace. No, we can't be that. But we can follow the rules. And so that's why they, they're shifting back to the Old Testament. And they're just being all, you know, they're like, wow, I, I'm following the Ten Commandments. I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal. You know, I don't kill people. I honor my mother. I do all the things that God wants me to do. And they totally blown it. They are now just rule followers. And they're not going to get to that level of spirit that Jesus was talking about. There's no way, no way, if you're stuck in your mind, you're all just following all the rules of your religion, and you misunderstand, you, you've missed it. You, you're not going to come close to what Jesus was talking about. And I tried to tell him, I said, you know, yeah, people just don't do that. I mean, let's face it, the Old Testament was all about rules. 175 different sins. And let's face it, the Old Testament clearly says if you screw up, if you sin, God is going to punish you. There's nothing redeeming about the way God is going to reward. All he's going to, all the offer is, and actually there was no offer of heaven. That was made up once Jesus came. Because he came up with the idea of bringing heaven on earth. Just the idea that whatever God had created could be intended for this world. But there really is no afterlife. Certainly if you're following an Old Testament regimen, then you know, then you know there is no heaven. There's nothing there. There's nothing in there. The, the Bible, the Old Testament, the Torah, the, the old book, is all about, well, it's really just three things. That's really, it's all it is. That's all it was for. To figure out who are the Jewish people. This was the time of King David. He's the one that hired a scribe to document the lineage of the Jewish people for the express purpose of getting them to be a monotheistic community. This would be one of the few people that devoted themselves to just one God. With rampant polytheism, nobody wanted to just honor one God. And that David felt that the best that could be done would be to get people to be monotheistic, to just believe in the one true God. So all the stories, all the writings were to identify, you know, who are the Jewish people and to convince them to be monotheist. And of course, if they weren't, they were going to burn in hell. They were going to be tortured. They were something vengeful, horrible was going to happen if they didn't do that. And then there were all these prophecy stories. So there's really three things. Uh, genealogy, monotheism, and prophecy. And the prophecies oftentimes would just say, you know, hey, if you do this kind of thing, this is going to happen. This horrible thing is going to happen if you don't do this. And so the Jewish people would either do it and not get punished, or not do it and then get punished as predicted. So, <laughs> there isn't much really divine or beautiful about what happens in I mean, I think David was somewhat aware, and he realized, you know, gee, it's pretty dark stuff here. And he had his own sort of personal relationship with God, and he did try to write that down and capture it through his psalms. And yeah, they're beautiful writing. 
So, you know, he tried, but in the overall picture, whew, really wasn't until Jesus thought of things beyond it. says, all right, you know, I, I, I still, I, I don't accept the notion that Jesus was in heaven at the beginning of creation. But it is sort of humorous for me to think about that. Because, I mean, first of all, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would, why, you know, God, so Jesus was in heaven. He was a being of God. And then he comes to earth as a human being, and yet he somehow achieves a level of divinity and connects with God. Well, of course, he came as a divine being, if that's the story. I don't think it is. But it doesn't make any sense. Why would he come as a divine being and then discover the divine and try to show people as human beings, when it was not in our nature that way. It just wasn't. There's no point of it. The, the, the better story is the story that Jesus was just a human being. He was just a man who figured out how to connect to the divine. That's a far more powerful story that he overcome. He did, he did the hard work. He did those four steps, the non-judgment, the forgiveness, the love, and found peace in himself. He had it, and he was trying to share that with others. I mean, that's the big miracle. That's the amazing story. But insisting that God was in heaven, that that's kind of a funny story to me, too. I mean, that, that just strikes me. I mean, if God, if Jesus is up there, especially at the time in the beginning when God is just ranting and raving because human beings are so effing stupid. I mean, they're just, don't, they don't get it. You know, when he threw Eve out, threw Adam out, and he wiped out the world with uh, the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah, all that stuff. I mean, God has just got to be this angry old guy just screaming and yelling his head off and Jesus is there saying, wait, dad, 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 just calm down. I, I think you're going about this whole, you know, divine thing, having people choose goodness over evil. You, you're, you're overdoing it. You're, you're punishing too much. You're overreacting. Let people try to figure it out. Give people a freaking break, man. Just calm down. Here, let, let me go down to earth, and I will try to tell them, you know, what you really want. That you want them to come and see the goodness within, and we're going to give them ample opportunity, and we're going to be compassionate, and we're going to be forgiving. I mean, how, how can people know forgiveness if you can't show them forgiveness? I mean, it's a pretty simple thing here. You should have been able to do that. So let me go down for you, and I'll try it. And of course, there are believers that believe that Muhammad was also up there before the creation. And, you know, Jesus and Muhammad were brothers. And, they're, and they, you know, maybe, you know, Jesus gave the shots, and, and then he goes, back, oh, man, those human beings are tough. And then Muhammad probably said, you know what, all right, here, Jesus, my brother, let me go give it a shot. And then Mohammed goes to earth and tries to raise up the consciousness of humanity. <laughs> so that, that, that strikes me as being a little funny. I know it didn't, didn't happen that way, but that's okay. It's, either way, it's still pretty interesting because clearly Mohammed especially, he was trying to, you know, tamp down the message of the Old Testament. He tried to bring even up. And there's actually a rather nice story about me and Moses. You know, I'm talking with Moses. We're getting along real chummy. And Moses thinks I'm great. You know, it didn't happen. But he thinks I'm great. But that's all right. We'll play along. Sure, and, and Moses did kind of what Jesus did. He kind of talked to God on my behalf. He says, you know, gee, God, you know, I, I've been talking to the devil. He's pretty cool. He's pretty cool being, you know. Uh, why can't you forgive him? And God says, well, it's not up to me. I will.